can I ask you a question? Of course you can, well? yeah. Yeah, of course. Uh, what makes you come alive? Like when you're when you're working and connecting people, what what drives you into that? Um I think the biggest driver for me is just the fact that um, I get to learn. Mm. I get to grow. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to Hustle is for Life. This is your show. And I'm going to start by asking you a question today. What goals are you setting yourself for 2018? Guess what? The first quarter is over. We're into the second quarter of 2018. What goals did you set yourself at the start? What new year resolutions did you set yourself? And have you followed through? Because as we know, follow through is everything. And as you know, this channel is all about holistic success. We don't just talk about one thing, about finances, about business, about entrepreneurship or relationships or health or fitness. We talk about everything, which is why I try and bring on amazing guests from all walks of life, all domains, so we can actually learn from them, follow in their footsteps, learn, you know, what, what are their secrets. And we can then start to employ them in our lives and start to accelerate our lives. And that's the goal. But really, we need to focus on what goals did we set for ourselves at the beginning of the year and have we followed through? Because that's everything. Follow through is everything. So with that, I'm going to introduce tonight's guest. Our guest today is a very, very successful lady who has created multiple businesses. She has uh, just got a ton of experience in so many different areas. She's actually a mom of three young girls and she's a, a wife to a very driven entrepreneur. She's uh, actually herself a coach and a consultant. She has run multiple six and seven figure companies over the last 10 years. And obviously she's got a lot of expertise and knowledge and skills that she can then take forward and, and you know, help other people with. She's also started uh, something called PerkyPerky.com, which is a coffee brand that invites women to step into their power from the first cup of coffee of the day onward. So with that, please help me welcome Marusha Murphy. Marusha, thank you for being hey. here. Excited to have you. <laughs> hey, it's so good to be here, Talal. Thank you so much for having me. No, it's a pleasure to have you on. Um, we actually connected through our mutual friend, Krista, who actually I have interviewed before. She is a phenomenal relationship coach. Uh, and I'll put the link below in the description to go and check out that interview. That was like probably one of the best interviews I have ever done. Um, mm. Really had a blast. So go check that out. But Marusha, let's, uh, let's talk about your journey. I think that's quite important. Can you tell a little bit about where all this started and oh, how yeah. did you how did you actually create so much, uh, you know, just such extraordinary results in your life? Gosh, wow. That's a big question, Talal. And I love that question. Thank you so much for asking. So um, I think I got my origins from my dad. My dad is, a, is an entrepreneur himself. He, I grew up in the Philippines. Um, and my dad was kind of like the royal architect of the Philippines. Like he would take on uh, clients who were creating vacation homes in the Philippines and they would be like the Duke of York or the Prince of Malaysia or, you know, people with, with a little bit of clout in their, in their countries. And I was a little girl, you know, I'm the oldest of four I was, as a girl, um, looking and seeing my dad meet and, you know, wine and dine, all of these, these dignitaries. And it was so much fun just to watch him light up and then also provide for our family. And I remember, you know, as a young girl, you know, I want to be like my dad when I grow up kind of thing, but I didn't know what that meant. You know, I saw him as he was the architect and, and he had this great team that loved him and he supported, but I had no idea what that really looked like. Um, fast forward um, a few years, we moved to the United States, and my dad is still there in the Philippines running the company, but uh, there was a big war in the Philippines, and so oh, wow. uh, in the 80s, yeah. And so my mom moved to the U.S. with the three kids by herself when she was in her 20s. I can't even imagine, right? Like crazy. Um, but, you know, we settled here or settled in the United States, in Florida specifically, and um, I saw my mom, you know, figure out all right, well, I'm basically a single mom right now. Um, I have to raise these kids. What am I going to do? And she would hustle her, her behind off basically to just create a life for her, her and her three children. And then, and then our extended family also ended up in that same area of town. What I found from my parents though at an early age was this, like, if you want something, you create that thing. 
right? There's no boxes. Um, there, there are no boxes that can box me in enough <laughs> or, or, or what am I trying to say? Like, I, there's no such thing as a box when you are wanting to create something that really matters and is, is really important to you. And I learned from my parents at an early age that we get to create a reality, whatever that looks like, you get to create that reality. So uh, my entrepreneurial journey actually started when I think I was probably, gosh, maybe eight or nine years old, Talal. And uh, my best friend Elizabeth and I in our neighborhood wanted to make a little bit of extra money. And so we decided to make bake sales and talent shows for the neighborhood. And we were like coordinators of all those things. And, and it was way fun. And then we created a babysitter's club when we were 11. And we were like the hub for all the neighborhood babysitting needs kind of thing. <laughs> um, it was really cool. And, and wow. um, yeah, and so my entrepreneurial journey definitely started at a young age. Um, it has just continued to grow. I'm now 37 years old, and um, it's been so much fun to be a part of seeing not just dreams that I or visions that I've had um, come to life to impact the, the world for for good, um, but also now empowering others to do the same thing. Right? Because to me, the, the whole thing is really about leaving that legacy for my children, um, for my girls to see that heck yeah, I can choose whatever path I want to create um, and make it happen for myself too. Awesome. That's beautiful. Yeah. Um, I, I, I do apologize. I think my, my computer was pinging. Um, I, I might have my Facebook Messenger open by accident or something, but I apologize. But it, 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 just to let you know, I, uh, that's what it was. It's okay. Nothing, oh, nothing, no worries. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, but that's, a, that's an amazing story. Um, I mean, wow, your mom actually moved to America with like three kids and, you know, was yeah. a new place and she had to really hustle. I mean, that's great. But then you learned so many amazing lessons from that. Um, and uh, you then became the neighborhood's babysitter. I mean, that's fantastic. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's funny because uh, Elizabeth and I, and she's now an entrepreneur as well. She has this amazing music school with multiple locations all throughout Orlando um, called the Music Box. I'll plug her there. Um, <laughs> but she and I, uh, she and I, you know, we, her, her, she grew up with a single mom and I grew up with basically a single mom. And, um, and in addition to uh, a whole bunch of aunts and, and grandparents that were in town, but um, we, we just felt like, of course, our parents, you know, they, when raising us this way, like, why wouldn't, why wouldn't we do these things? Why wouldn't we create what we wanted? Our parents were so encouraging of that. Um, but yeah, my mom at, you know, in her twenties, I think about that all the time. Like I'm now 37, like a whole decade older than my mom, you know, was when she moved across the world for a better life. Right. Because it was a, such, it was such a war torn um, country in the eighties, the Philippines was. And so my dad had to actually go into hiding for a while. And uh, my mom moved across the world uh, with three little kids. So I was five, my brother was four and my sister was two when we wow. came over here. Yeah. Wow. Crazy, right? Yeah. 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 But also really powerful at the same time. And, and it's so amazing that despite all, all of this that happened to your parents, they were still so encouraging and they were yeah. still so open-minded and really essentially just nurtured you to become somebody who you are today. And that's really powerful. I'm wondering, uh, Marusha, maybe you can touch on that, on the parenting side of things uh, at this stage and maybe just talk about how that's impacted you, um, you know, in, in your later life and how you're now passing that on to your children? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, one of the things that um, I've been finding with my, with my mom, even to this day, my parents, whenever we're with them, because now my dad lives in Florida as well. Um, when we're with my parents, it's always about like, what is the biggest you know, what is the biggest concern or biggest need you're seeing in this world today? And we have this, you know, dinner, that our dinner conversations are like, what are the current events of the day and how can we make an impact? Um, and so they've always kind of seeded those types of conversations to us at the dinner table, whether it was just with my mom or with both of them there at the table. It was always about like, how do you see yourself and the gifts that you're, you've been given to really impact the world in a bigger way? And it might have been through a political, you know, seeing what's happening in the political sphere at the time or in a financial, in the financial sphere, just giving us voice, giving us opportunity to be a voice. Um, and we all had different opinions, you know, there's a whole, you know, we're all from different um, uh, experiences and parties, but the real, the real thing that my parents taught me was empathy for the other. You know, they might not look like me or they might, but what if we stepped in their shoes? What would that feel like if you're on the other side of that coin? 
So as a grown woman now with my own three children, I'm finding myself doing the same thing. So it's like when, you know, and I also, I mean, I still do things that I just, I'm not super excited about that my parents have passed on to me. Like, you know, I just told you so just go do that thing or whatever. But, um, uh, but at the same time, I'm also passing that on, you know, the, that side of the conversation, like, okay, well, you know, if so-and-so calls you a name or if you call so-and-so a name, how does that feel if you were the person being called that name or, um, you know, or whatnot in terms of entrepreneurship, it's been so fun to lull because my, my oldest is nine years old. Um, and she's been watching me grow a company since the day she was born pretty much, you know, and it's been really, really fun because this year she actually started her own company, her first company. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. And Impressive. she had her first, I'm so proud of her. I'm so, so <laughs> proud of her. She's going to start an Etsy store soon. And, and she, she came up with it on her own. Her idea was totally hers. I was my, my husband and I were our, her first investors in the company and she's now, you know, creating these beautiful wooden dolls that um, represent families, but you get to choose your family members. Like it's the coolest thing. So you get to pick which dolls you want in your family and you make your own family experience or whatever. And so wow. it's been fun to watch her like start to pitch it. Um, she started off really shy and, and really more focused on like the creative side of building the thing. And um, recently uh, in partnership with an organization here in town called the Startup Kits Academy, she has been, uh, she took her product to market. And I'm seeing her as she's selling, her voice is getting stronger and she's gaining more confidence. You see it in her body language. Her body's like lifted up more. And she's like, mom, this is so fun. And I'm like, yes, this is awesome. You know? And then my four, my just turned five year old, she was four when she said this recently said, um, you know, mom, I want to start a business one day. And I was like, really? what would you like to start? And she said, I'm going to go to all of my friends' houses and organize all of their clothes and all of their toys. That would be the most fun thing. And I was like, honey, I can hire you today if I could. <laughs> so great. You, can, you can focus on our house because that is not mama's strength at all. Um, and so, yeah, it's really fun to just see, like even at a young age, see how these children are picking up on the values that we bring mm. to them, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's amazing. Like, wow, I, I'm 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 actually really really uh, impressed by your daughter. Like, she started her own business and she's going out and she's creating things in the world, and that's fantastic. And she's nine, and obviously, yes. younger ones getting inspired as well, and, and she's taking action. But it all stems from the fact that you had that growth mindset instilled in you. You had that empathy instilled in you from a very young age from your parents, yes. and now you're exactly. able to pass it on to the next generation, essentially. Uh, and, yeah. and that's that's beautiful. That's really beautiful to see. Um, and you know, and another thing you talked about, like how your parents gave your voice inside the house to express your opinions, but also to nurture you and expand your mind to say, well, how can you solve this problem, this big problem that we have in the world? How will you solve it? What can you bring? What impact can you make? And to the audience, I think that's a fantastic way of thinking for, for everybody, really, for all of us, that uh, even I need to work on, on what impact I can make and what can I contribute to the world each and every single day. Yes. So really powerful. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm so glad. I'm so glad um, we're talking about this. It's something that I think that oftentimes we get wrong as entrepreneurs too. Mm -hmm. Like bringing it to the entrepreneurial space. Let's you know. Let's go there. Like we often come into the marketplace saying, "Hmm, I want to create a blank product. You know, fill in the blank, whatever it is. A service, a, a physical product, a good, whatever." And the reality is, we really need to meet people where they're at in the conversation that they're currently having, right? And so if we get comfortable in how do we, in looking at the current events and get comfortable looking at what is happening that really impacts people, impacts people, whether it's through their pain or just riles them up in some way to be a better human, then what if we lean into that conversation and build from there? Like, how do I fit here? Yeah. You know? So it's looking at then the conversation of like, what are my skills? What are, what are my experiences? What lights me up? And all the, the, what I call the God wiring, you know, it's a way in which we're wired um, from a higher purpose. Um, how we look at that and then we look at, okay, this is what's happening in the world. Huh. How do, I, how do I fit this in a powerful way with what's happening right now? That is when the magic can happen. That's where the sparks can happen because it's already connecting with the conversation that the world is having at large. Right? Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. And and it's not just with entrepreneurship. I think this can be applied to pretty much any domain of life. You know, sure. whether that is your relationships, whether that is, you know, your your friendships, it uh, it could be your finances, your health, your fitness, like it's it's everything, right? Um, yeah. This is something that I strongly believe in creating holistic success in every area of your life and not just focusing on one thing. It's like, I want this house and I want this car or I want this right. job or I want this business. It's not about that. It's, it's much more than that. You know, otherwise you're limiting your thinking. But I think that's, uh, that's really powerful what you shared there. I am, however, you know, curious to know what, what would you say to people who actually might not have had that nurturing uh, from a young age in their mm. own home, in, in that comfort zone, essentially. Because, you know, if you don't have that uh, voice given to you in your comfort zone and suddenly you have to go out in the wider world, it feels very intimidating to then go ahead and, you know, maybe step into somebody who you are not really kind of essentially wired, uh, yeah. in that tends to be. Um, but may, maybe, maybe you know, here you can um, go, you know, go back to your daughter because obviously she started off really shy, but, and then eventually she, you know, is, is a lot more confident in terms of her yes. pitch and what, her, what she wants to do. So I'm just wondering what, what advice can you give us there? Yeah, that's a great, great question. I think, and I actually was just talking to a group of women about this at an event uh, two nights ago, was is this idea that we choose every single day who we, who we want to be around. Right. And so, you know, there's a famous Jim Rohn quote, um, you're the average of the five people that you are surrounded with. Oh, you're giving and, me chills. Oh, I love that. <laughs> it's so true though. Right. Like yeah, yeah. for us, you know, for me in my life, what I found is when I'm very conscious about who I'm putting around me and who I'm choosing to, to be supported by that makes such an impact, mm. you know? Um, because in turn, what happens is I can be a light and a beacon of good too. Yeah. As well. Right. And so I'm consciously, consciously creating my reality. I'm consciously every single day being intentional, intentional about who I choose to be around. Mm. Um, so even if this is not something that has been a part of our lives for very long, and there's definitely areas in my life where I feel like I haven't, I haven't had a lot of support around. I've had to choose specifically to be around that. And, you know, it, potentially it could be a physical move for some. It could be um, a, a mental shift. I mean, just listening to this show, right, Talal? Like, this is something that the, the person that's on the other end right now can, can hold on to and say, wow, there are people that are doing something differently than the way I'm used to doing life or being around or the conversations I'm used to being around. So it's consciously putting this, the goodness, um, things that are going to raise you up into the forefront and everything else is, is guarded. You know, you have to create a safeguard to not have that in your, in your sphere. Yeah. And, and, you know, Marusha, thank you so much for saying that. And, and, you know, people in the audience, seriously, I did not prep Marusha to share that quote or to say any of that because <laughs> guess what I talk about it all the time on the show that's one of my oh, do you? <laughs> yeah absolutely I talk about that quote all the time on the show uh, but seriously I did not I did not prep you right like this was no this not was at all it. yeah <laughs> awesome I love it but yeah, it's, it is so powerful. And I'll just quickly relate uh, a, a study that actually they, they did. And the, what they found uh, in this study was something really quite interesting. Mm. They measured people's brain waves uh, when they're in, in different situations around other people. Okay. Right? Huh. And especially, you know, in couples. So they, they looked at, you know, um, people who have just met, they've been on like, you know, one or two dates and people who are uh, married, they've been married for like 30 years or whatever. And people who are just, you know, newly married. Okay. Okay. Um, but it wasn't just limited to that. That was just one, one type of, uh, you know, thing they wanted to study, but obviously they studied other situations as well. Okay. And, what they actually found was that when you are in a room with somebody else, your brain waves start to synchronize. Mm. Right? Mm. So it's almost like, you know, we believe it, we talk about like telepathic communication in, yeah. in like science fiction and stuff. But what they found was your brain waves actually start to synchronize to other people's brain waves. Yeah. That is so cool. I it had is no idea. crazy. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and this is why, for example, you can walk into a room and you can feel 
the the coldness right like there's there's no energy there like everybody is just sucking the energy out of the room and you can walk into a different room and it just feels so warm and comfortable and you know welcoming it's yes. just different and and that that's essentially is what what could be the cause and i'm not saying that i, I know everything about the study i'm just saying this is something i, I found out and, and if anybody wants to know more you know just i guess just google it i'm sure it'll pop up somewhere yeah. but it was so fascinating to learn that I am so interested in learning more about that for sure. I would love, if you ever find the, the, the information on that study, definitely send it my way because you're right. You know, it's whenever I go into a room, actually one of the, the um, memories I'm having as you're saying that right now is I, about a year ago, I launched my coffee company. It's called Perky Perky Coffee and it's all about raising women um, up. Right. And, and I believe that if we invite us women to step into our power from the first cup of the day, cause we're having that cup of coffee anyway, but we're doing it with intention. We can fully own the day instead of being a victim to our day. Right. Yeah. And so, and that's for men too. Um, a lot of men also drink our coffee <laughs> um, for sure. Um, and so, but so one of the memories I'm having right now is um, of our, we had a launch party. Right. And it was, I, I wanted to throw it for the Austin community um, to say thank you for being a part of helping us create this brand. I brought uh, over 50 women together to taste test different coffees, try out different potential roasts that we were bringing in from potential roasters that we were going to bring into our company. And, um, and so it was a thank you. It was basically like a thank you party. Right. So I walk into my own party <laughs> in essence and Talal, the energy was beyond my comprehension like the, actually that's where i met krista oh, actually wow. that is actually where i met krista and reminded and reminded and that's why i was like i need to know this woman further <laughs> it was so high vibing right like it was this like level of energy that i could not i could not have done it by myself mm -hmm. right yeah. it was this like and it was probably our brain waves it was all connected and just so we were so alive in that room that night and there was over 150 people there and everybody the, the little like the the, the conversations were so uplifting and so alive and people left that event feeling like they were like, this was one of the best events I've ever been to. I mean, it was a thank you party for them, you know, and, and yet it was one of the most powerful events for some people because, um, because that's what we did. We just chose to create that intention. We came into that room saying, you know what, this is all about us showing up for, for our lives. How do we show up for our lives? Mm. and and then and then you know let it play out um so us all being in that room it was it was pretty magical i wish you could have been there <laughs> oh i wish i was there as well it sounds absolutely insane i, I, I yeah that's, it was pretty cool I, yeah that's the kind of environment i i actually seek out to to yeah. be a part of because it's just it's just so uplifting and you're absolutely right it's, it's absolutely phenomenal to surround yourself with those people yes. so yeah that's uh, that's fantastic and i'm glad that you're doing all these things especially with perky perky that you're doing uh you know bringing all these amazing women together i think that's really really powerful um and uh you know it, it's, it's really important that that message is shared with more people so yeah thank you for thank you for being a force of awesomeness in the world <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, um, Marusha, let's uh, let's talk about something that you've mentioned a few times, now, and I absolutely believe in that. And it's all about creating your reality, right? Mm -hmm. It's how you show up in the world, and then you create the reality depending on how you show up in the world. So, how do you help entrepreneurs create their amazing realities and uh, achieve the dreams that they want to achieve? That's a great question. Well, I do it a couple ways. Number one, first, do it myself, right? Um, role model it for others um, who are trying to figure that out. So for me, my journey is literally every morning I get up. Um, it used to be waking up at five. When I So just a, as a side note, up until about six months ago or so, I was running a, um, a business incubator here in Austin full time. So I would, um, and I was the director of that, that community and that experience for, for our clients, which were e-commerce brands partnering with investors and also influencers. So I, you know, managed that whole process. So up until about seven months, six, seven months ago, um, I would be up at five in the morning, you know, have my coffee, take out my journal and spend time in meditation to start off my day. So it was about 30 to 45 minutes of my morning. And then I would get up and get the kids ready for school and get the day moving from there. Now it's, I can sleep in a little bit. So I, I kind of switched it a little bit because I, I love sleep and I love being up later. 
Um, so now it's, it's shifted, but for me, it's still having that, that, um, focused morning time. Um, and, but where I switch it now, it's, I get the kids up first, <laughs> get them out the door and then have the house quiet. Um, and then I'm able to do that meditation and that meditative time for me. Um, and I'm not sure which one I like more or less, but it's, it still works overall. Um, um, for me, the thing I don't like about it as much is that my kids see me a little bit more grumpy <laughs> in the mornings because I haven't had that time for me yet. Um, so I'm not loving that, but I do love the sleep. So I'm trying to figure out what, what weighs out, you know, sleep or grumpiness, sleep or grumpiness. <laughs> um, uh, so anyway, so role modeling that for, for people. So I share that oftentimes, making sure my body's in movement often. Um, making space for creativity and to be in flow when I write and when I speak. Um, that is so, so important to me. Um, and so I, I keep, I, I keep a protective layer around that time for myself. Um, I, and the other piece of it too is recognizing like I, I am so passionate about seeing more entrepreneurs really create companies that are not just, um, not just solo gigs anymore right? Like actually taking that dream that we have to be big, that our big visionary dreams to impact the world for good and actually make that happen. And so I've been creating, um, over in partnership with a couple other awesome people, um, this, this group I'm calling female powered. And it's, um, it's basically to raise up the female entrepreneur from her idea through creating an audience creating, putting products and services out there in the world that are going to impact the world for good, but are also profitable. And then uh, once they get to a certain level, being able to create strategic partnerships and basically have a business development agency where we get to help grow them and, and launch them to other channels. Um, and so I'm in, I'm in the middle of creating that. And so I do, so while I model, I also am teaching now the process of growing these companies like I've been growing over the last 10 years uh, into six and seven figure businesses. So it's been super, super fun um, to do. And I'm, I'm like literally in that right now. Talal. <laughs> that's phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's absolutely amazing. And uh, my, my next question uh, kind of, you already touched upon slightly, but um, I'm, I'm wondering in, in terms of you talk about, you know, creating an amazing re reality, you know, creating extraordinary results, what, what would you attribute your success to? I mean, we've talked about mindset. We've talked mm -hmm. about, yeah. you know, the, the nurturing from a young age and the, the, you know, how your parents gave you a voice and how they helped you develop that empathy. But what, what did you specifically do by yourself that uh, you can attribute your success to? What are the tips and routines and the habits that allowed you to get to this, this level? Because I believe that success is an inside job and this is what yes. you're moving to as well. So can you, can you help us out with that? Yeah, that's a great question. I think I touched on it a little bit, um, but but to go in more depth, I think a big part of it is really knowing knowing yourself. Like, I mean, like you said, to me, I, I always say like, you know, building a business is like getting a PhD in your own personal development mm -hmm. because I believe it is. I really do believe that you, there's no better track to understand who, and I have a master's in counseling, by the way. So I've gotten a lot of awareness and insight from um, doing that work to get this, this degree and to be, you know, to, to align myself into a therapeutic space. And even so entrepreneurship is like a PhD in your own personal development, right? Like yeah. the work that I do on myself is, um, it's, an, it's a lot, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I feel like it's a boot camp of, of your mind oftentimes, because for example, like right now, you know, in Perky Perky, we're growing so much. We've got, you know, I, and there's a point where I'm like, oh my gosh, do I have to slow down my audience growth? Because I don't know if I can keep up with like the scale and the logistics side of it to grow, you know, that, that needs to grow alongside me growing this audience. Um, and that's my own mental game, right? Like, I'm like, okay, well, how do I grow? Like I have to get out of my own blocks. So I think the number one thing that I've done is to get comfortable with the unknown, to get comfortable with my fear of what, um, that, well, basically that fear is there. There's always going to be a fear. And yet, because it's now such a, like a, like a, a comfortable, I mean, I know that person, I know that, I know that entity of fear, um, learning how to lean in and this, and 
and going forward anyway. Mm. So that, that's been a big thing for me. And, um, so that's big. I think the other thing is, um, I've gotten really good at thinking about the other. So again, I, you know, I touched on this a little bit, but like I, a lot of times people come into business and they're like, Hey, here's my thing. Here's my widget. Let me tell you all about the features and let me tell you all about the, you know, all about how awesome this thing is. And they don't actually think about the person on the other side that's, that they're talking to. Right. Or if they do, they're thinking about them in numbers. Like, mm. Ooh, I just grew my audience by a thousand people. Or I just, you know, but they're not actually thinking about the person that that person has a heart. The person has emotions. The person has a potentially a family. Yeah. The person has a live livelihood. And we really get to like the micro level of who we're actually speaking to. That's, that is where we can affect change. That's when you see a brand go from just like another brand in that space to a brand that makes an impact. Mm. Right. And it creates profitability because now you have clients or customers, depending on what kind of business you have that are more invested in the brand versus just another brand. Does that make sense? Do so you think about like a lot of the brands that you may purchase from, right? That you're loyal to think about how they've made you feel. Oftentimes, if you look at how they've gotten to that point where they figure out how, or the, where they can evoke such an emotion within each of us, it's because they've gone internal as well and thought, who am I actually speaking to? Who do I really care that much about that I want to be able to meet them where they're at to solve their problem and, or their pain right now, right? So that's, um, I think when, when we're building brands, we're building, we, we really have to look at it instead of building a brand, i.e. the logo, the look and stuff, you think about the person, you're creating a customer experience. When you look at it from that perspective about who is my customer and what experience am I gonna give them, it's almost like, and I always use the analogy of a home. Like, I, 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 love, I love creating a space where people feel welcome and they're like my family, right? So I think about my business as if it was a home. The minute they ring the doorbell, they're already, are they anticipating, you know, coming in to join me in this experience we're about to have? The minute I open the door, how do I respond to them? How do they respond to me? What is it? What's that exchange? Um, I invite them into the home. You know, what room do I show them first? You know, and just you really create more of like an experience around, um, around them, right? Help them feel most comfortable in, in your home, i.e. your business or your brand. So that's, that's what I, I like to do. And I think that's oftentimes a very, uh, it's a very slight difference from how other people do it, but it makes a world of difference. Um, when, when, you know, recently, not recently, about the four years ago, I created a, a group, a community here in Austin called the Austin Moms Network. Um, it was an idea that my friend Sarah and I had to build a village for moms, <laughs> basically. And we, um, our rally cry, our motto is that it takes a village to raise a mom. Mm. because motherhood is so hard, you know, it's so hard. And so we wanted this to be a space for that today. It's over 14,000 women large and wow. super, super engaged here in the Austin community. Last year we won best local resource for moms here in the city. And it's a pretty proceed from a pretty prestigious, um, uh, awards, uh, I mean, it's called the Austin birthing awards. It's pretty prestigious here and people, or it's a coveted award, I should say. So we're really, really grateful to have gotten that. And, and you know, we were, we were uh, uh, nominated by our community to, to receive this award. And that's, what it, that's the thing. It's like, it's that little thing between just being a Facebook group that people can join to being an actual life impacting resource for someone, right? There's a huge difference. There's a huge difference of heart connection. And that's, that's the kind of work I do. And I help tweak brands, help, help brands tweak those messages to get, and not just messages, but get, get clear on, on that, who they want to really impact, how they really want to impact and who they really want to impact through the work that they get to bring to the world. Fantastic. And you, you, First of all, congratulations on the award. I think that's phenomenal. And you created such an amazing community of like 14,000 moms. That's, that's powerful. That is really cool. Yeah. Um, just here in, here in Austin too. So it's like a low, very local thing, but it is, um, it is something that has really impacted our community for good. 
Wow. Yeah. But, but that's, that's absolutely phenomenal. And, you know, for the audience, if you have seen any of the other interviews that I've done with other successful people, if you haven't go check them out, seriously, you will see certain patterns, certain things being repeated coming again and again and again. It's, it's just amazing. Like whatever Marusha shared with us today, like it's, it's what others really successful people have also talked about. So, you know, there must be truth in it. So go and make sure you check them out. Uh, Marusha, just very quickly, I'm wondering how can people help you right now and where can they go to connect with you? Yeah, that's a great, great question. Um, so if they want to try our coffee, right now we're only shipping in the United States, um, but we are looking actually to go uh, international to to the UK and um, into Australia uh, in the near future. Huh? We're so excited. Um, but they can go to perkyperky.com and they can, you know, check out how we connect with our audience and in a variety of different ways that way. Uh, or check out our coffee for sure. We would love that. And we have a 20% off coupon there. Um, if someone's interested in working with me uh, and the female powered movement that we're growing, um, going to my website at marushamurphy.com um, that would be great. And we can set up a time to get to know each other and get to know your business better. Perfect. I'll put those links below in the description so people can go and, you know, check them out uh, when they're ready. Guys, this has been a phenomenal conversation with Marusha. She came and she dropped a ton of value. I learned a bunch of stuff that I will be taking forward. Everything from, you know, how to talk to kids and how to help them give, uh, give them a voice and nurture them and teach them empathy to having a growth mindset, to creating your own reality, to how you show up in the world, to actually connecting with the individual and not just looking at them as a number. There were just so many golden nuggets from this conversation and I thoroughly enjoyed it. And as always, I will encourage you guys to go ahead and share it. Share it with other people who you care about, who need to hear these conversations and hear this message. It's so powerful and I believe we can make a really great impact together. Also, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't forget uh, to, uh, sorry, don't forget, so you don't miss out on <laughs> any of the future awesome conversations that we are going to have with more amazing guests. Marusha, thank you so much for being here with us. You were phenomenal and I'd love to have you back for another round. Thank you so much, Talal. It was a pleasure to be here with you. And I really had a great time too. Yes, we did. I totally enjoyed this. Guys, stay awesome. Hustle hard. Like it says back there, hustle hard and I'll <laughs> catch you in the next one.